Yep. <laughs> Love this dungeon. <laughs> Love this dungeon. Actually, I just love this room of this dungeon. I like dungeons with safe rooms. Safe space. I like my safe space. Yeah. Piss off. <laughs>
Force of character. She won the uh, bank manager over. And there was no way, but there was no way he could approve a loan through the bank. Because the bank would never go for it. So he loaned her $2,000 out of his own, own account. She paid it back within a couple years. Now, mind you, this was years ago when $2,000 was a nice chunk of change. And um, ended up paying off the house. She had a little bit of money set, um, left over every month, so she took that and invested it in um, stocks. What was it? Intel stocks. And then when she retired, she cashed them in. More than enough money to live off of. Because she'd gotten a little bit here, a little bit there throughout her life. And she started buying them when Intel was still a young company, so she got them dirt cheap. Woman was a saint, though. You will be hard pressed to find a better human being in all of existence. <coughs> excuse me, in all of, all of existence, an absolute saint. A lot of people talk it, but she actually lived it. You're kidding, right? <laughs> Guild invite is more important than school. <laughs> oh, your your family's going to disown you, Gathorn. He's going to ditch school to go over to Kunark with one of the, his officer characters to give somebody a guild invite. She had a stroke um, a couple a few years back, and after she did, my, my dad had to take over her uh, finances. But he found out after going through all her finances. That every month she was given half her income away to charity. Every single month. She always felt that she had the extra money. And because she did, she had a responsibility to help people. Who needed it more than she did. I'd buy one if it was on a big plot of land out in the middle of the country. And I could still get a fast internet connection. I wouldn't buy one in town. Because any, any even remotely metropolitan areas uh, are going to become run down before too long. And you're never going to see a return on your investment. Because, uh, you know, somebody is going to buy it and um, turn it into a rental. And once rentals move into your neighborhood, then your entire neighborhood goes to shit. But if you can find a place out, out in the country, nice place, um, nice plot of land, something worth owning, then I could see it. Yeah, yeah, see, that's it. If, if you move a lot, there's no point in buying a home. I refuse to invest in anything, absolutely anything. Now that I know how fragile the, um, the dollar is, um, after, you know, doing some reading and digging and researching and whatnot, and, you know, the euro as well. You won't catch me investing anything in anything. They're all just hanging on a thread. Yeah. And we're, we're well situated if, if, you know, if it does go bad. We're well equipped. Um, it's one of the nice things about being poor. But we're in a really delicate balance right now. And honestly, the only thing that's keeping us going is uh, the fact that we've continued to stay at war. For the last, what, 80 years? But um, eventually that's going to stop. It's going to have to stop. Because eventually we're not even going to be able to afford that. And, uh, and then it's going to fall apart. Yeah, that doesn't mean I begrudge anybody their wealth or their aspirations. It, it, it's not that at all. It's it's not the way I want to do it. I, I don't I don't need those things. I don't want those things. It's just it's more more to worry about. We like very simple. We like very clean. <laughs> no complications. Um, that's just the way we like to do it. And we enjoy our time together. Uh, we, we're we're the odd couple. We um, enjoy spending time together. Enjoy doing things as a family together. So we want to enjoy as much of that as possible. So we make sure our daughter's provided for. Everything's provided for.
Oh, we're more than eligible. They're begging us to take it. We have, There's a funny story. There's this uh, program. Wait, let me get a coffee, and then I'll tell you the funny story. You'll get a kick out of this. Be right back. Uh, okay. There's this um, uh, program here in Pennsylvania. I don't, I don't know. Other states probably have something similar, but it's called uh, WIC, W-I-C, Women, Infants, and Children is what it stands for. You notice they leave men out of the equation. It's almost like it's part of the plan. <laughs> but anyhow, this, this, it's a program that um, they, they give you vouchers uh, for baby formula. It's for new, new mothers uh, and like the first year of the child's growth. Um, they give you vouchers that where you can get so many ounces of formula, you know, certain cereals that are approved, uh, fresh vegetables. You know, you generally don't, basically know what it is. Well, we weren't expecting to have the, the, the daughter. Um, complete surprise. We didn't think she was capable of having kids. Um, it wasn't part of the plan. And then lo and behold, she ends up pregnant. So we were not prepared, uh, to say the least. Uh, so we checked into it, you know, just more out of curiosity than anything, just to see what, uh, what, what the deal was. It, it was a little too close to welfare for us. So, uh, we weren't really too comfortable with it. Um, but, uh, we went in and talked to the people just to see what, what the deal was. And, uh, they, they, of course, got some information from us, phone number, address, that kind of thing. Um, I shit you not, they called us like six times trying to sell us on this program. Um, after we'd already said no. And finally, on the last call, I, I, I took the phone from her and I said, look, we don't want your program. We don't want your assistance. We don't want your help. We don't need it. We'll be fine. Don't call here. If we need your services, we'll contact you. I had to say this to the lady. Uh, and, and they weren't only trying to get us on this WIC program, but they were also all ready to sign us for food stamps, medical card, uh, the whole nine yards. Um, they were pimping this stuff hard. I was flabbergasted. Oh my God, I couldn't believe it. Well, the, the thing is, they, get, they do kind of, sort of. Um, in order to ensure their jobs, they get audited every year. And if they're not meeting certain quotas, then they start getting cut back. So they have to make sure that they give out as much as they possibly can to ensure that everybody has a job next year. Rather than trying to work themselves out of a job like they should be doing, like a good civil servant should be doing, um, they're doing the exact opposite and trying to make it grow as big as they possibly can so that they can not only keep their jobs but hire more people. It's sick. It's really sick. And this is all, you know, tax dollars. This is all paid for with tax dollars. I mean, it wasn't even just that they were calling us. It's that they were giving you sign-on bonuses. You know, they had prizes. If you signed up for the program, you got prizes. You know, like uh, household appliances, you know, like toasters and things like like banks used to do when you signed, got a new savings account with them. It was disgusting. It was, it was really disgusting. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe how far it had, it had fallen. I mean, when I was a kid, my mom was a single mom. And she had, you know, us four kids. Um, she was going to school. She had to get some help. But I just remember it being a lot more difficult and a lot, a lot more shame attached to it back then. And now it's like people brag about it. You go to the uh, grocery store on, you know, food stamp day, um, and uh, it, it's just wall to wall with people pulling two, three grocery carts through the grocery store, and, and not, and you know, with soda and chips and crab legs, fucking crab legs. You shouldn't be eating crab legs if you can't afford to fucking buy your own damn groceries. I can't afford crab legs. <laughs> and I love crab legs. They did a, a study, and somebody who's a full-time welfare recipient um, earns the equivalent of $65,000 a year after you take into account all the utility benefits, um, the food stamps, the cash assistance, uh, all the other, uh, the rental assistance, all the other things that go along with it. And every single one of them has a fucking iPhone. Now you tell me how that's poverty level. That's the thing. That's the thing. Um, and that, that's the, the, the little bit of um, joy that I do get out of that is knowing that when the money does run out, they're screwed. They're completely and absolutely screwed because they have no survival skills whatsoever. They've been so dependent on the system. And some of these, some of them are generations. You know, it's a family affair. Um, so they've never had to develop survival t skills. Um, most of them wouldn't know how to fill out a checkbook. The number of programs that are available 
to people that don't want to do anything. Free college tuition for a degree that you're never going to use. Hand it. Just hand it to them. Here. Here you go. No, you don't have to do anything for it. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to develop character. You don't have to learn responsibility. We'll take care of you. Yeah, it does. It does. And you sleep better. You And you, and you live a happier life. And I, and I truly believe that. When, when you take care of your own, when, when you fend for yourself, when you're not dependent on somebody else, you're just a better person for it and you're a happier person for it. Your quality of life is better. I'm one of the happiest people you'll ever met, and I don't have two plug nickels to rub together. But I'm not in debt to anybody. I'm not indebted to anybody either. It is. It's very, very much. Well, they're they're trying to create a um, system of dependence, cradle to grave. Come to the government. Trust the government. We'll take care of you. You can trust us. We're your friends. When did that happen? When the hell did that happen? When? Has trusting the government ever been a good thing? They're the people you're not supposed to trust. They're the ones you're supposed to keep a close eye on because you can't trust them. Because they're doing it with your money. <laughs> I don't argue against liberals. I, I don't. There's no point. It's like arguing faith with a religious. There's no point in arguing with them because you're not going to change their mind. I'll listen to what they have to say, um, but I, I, I've given up trying to argue with them. It's pointless. It's completely pointless. The only way to correct the not, not liberals, not liberals. That's a misuse of the term. Uh, they're not liberals. They're progressives. Two completely different creatures. There's nothing wrong with liberalism. Um, liberal just means free. Uh, progressive means control. <laughs> That's the difference. And progressivism is effectively a religion. And there's no point in arguing with them. You're not going to change their mind. They, they, the, 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 those that follow that train of thought are so far down that path that they're never going to admit that they could possibly be wrong. I'm willing to look at both sides. I'm willing to look at other sides of the issue. Um, and if you know what you're saying can be done in a manner beneficial to society as a whole uh, without... You know, forcing anything on anybody, which is a big thing, then um, then we'll talk. Absolutely, but that that's not what they want. They you do it our way. You do it our way. You you do what we tell you to. And no, that's not. That, there's nothing liberal about that. You need to speak from a third grade level if you're going to do that, can you? <laughs> Because uh, anything beyond that, they just they don't have the initiative to better themselves in that manner. Um, learning takes effort, uh, and they've already proven they're not willing to learn by becoming part of the progressive agenda. Because anybody with a shred of common sense, anybody with even just a modicum of common sense, will know that the, the stuff that they're spewing is absolute bullshit and it's completely unsustainable. For them, it's all about the easiest life possible, the least amount of input possible, and do I get a free phone? It's it's a me. It's me, 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 and that's what it all is. It's all about me. We help people so that we feel better about ourselves. We 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 rise the minorities up from the depths so that we feel better about ourselves. It has nothing to do with helping them. It's so that you feel better about yourself. It doesn't matter if they're actually benefiting from what you're doing or not because they're not. They're absolutely not. It is such a selfish mentality. Yeah, but if you if you break down their high education data, you'll find it is complete bullshit, or it's completely skewed from what the actual data says, or the data has been changed to suit the agenda. You know, like with um, the gay thing, uh, homosexuality and whatnot used to be considered a mental disorder. Uh, until the progressives had it taken off the list. Not through um, any scientific me means, but through legislation. Um, it wasn't politically correct. So they had it taken off the list of uh, psychological disorders. And that's not a slam on gays, that's just the way it was. She, yeah, her and um, Elizabeth Warren. 
both of them because they're both uh, they're going to end up uh, Seth Riches <laughs> or publicly discredited feeding on itself feeding on itself they're not even progressive so um, those aren't they're not progress there's nothing even remotely progressive about those them they just use that as a tool it's a voting it's a, it's a way to get votes offer people free things for votes yeah isn't that isn't that crazy isn't that crazy we were just talking about that uh, the other night how they um systematically normalize things um, especially when some, one of them gets caught doing it <laughs> well there is a there is a distinct difference between a liberal and a progressive um, they're not the same thing at all uh, a liberal just believes in freedom whereas a progressive believes in anything but freedom they're, they're almost polar opposites oh, oh yeah um yeah, once one of them gets nabbed doing one of these things, then all of a sudden it becomes, well, don't don't judge the poor guy because he has a psychological disorder. The only reason I harp on that um, liberal versus progressive thing is um, it's, it's it's a very important distinction because it's a linguistic distinction. Language is important. Words are important because words have meaning, and if you uh, alter the meaning of a word, then the word becomes muddy. And uh, you no longer know what the other person is talking about. So it's important for these things to have distinct meaning so that you know exactly what the other person is talking about. And the, the casual slinging around of the term liberal um, isn't doing true liberals any favors. Because they don't agree with the progressives either. Sargon, prime example. Um, that, that's why I, I think it's important to make that distinction and, and to use the term properly. Because not everything uh, a liberal says is bad. Um, was it um, uh, Peterson? Jordan Peterson um, did a really good little bit on the two sides and uh, how both of them are essential to society as a whole. Because it's the liberals. The liberals are the ones with the ideas. They're the, they're the smart ones. They're they're the ones that come up with the ideas. The free thinkers. You know what I mean. Um, they think outside the box. And then those ideas are then passed on to the other side who are able to take those ideas and, and put them into, a, into effect in a practical manner, a manner that benefits everybody, a manner that's cost effective. So in between there, you have a happy medium. Both, both sides have their, their purpose, and in the middle they meet. So, yeah, you can't have a society that's all one or all the other because it doesn't work. One side you can't afford, and the other side you don't progress. If you have too much conservatism, conservatism's too much on the right side, we'll just call it left and right. Um, if you have too much on the right side, then everything stagnates. There's no progress. Um, but if you have too much on the left side, I'm getting my sides mixed up, um, then you run out of money. <laughs> Because you have all these crazy ideas and everybody wants to put them into effect, but nobody knows how to put them into effect. They, they, they have the ideas down, they just don't know how to do it practically. Personal liberties. You know, a true liberal doesn't mind if you own a gun. Um, they may not approve of it themselves, but you're free to do so. A true liberal might not like your thought on races, lifestyles, whatever, but they recognize the fact that you're free to do so. I may not agree with what you think, but I'll fight you to death for your right to think it. Progressive tells you how to think. A progressive tells you how to live. A progressive tells you what to accept. There is no freedom in progressivism. It's the, it's the antithesis of freedom. It's the antithesis of liberty. Yeah, yeah. Freedom, freedom itself. You know, good point. BG is uh, freedom itself is an illusion, but it's it's not necessarily freedom. It's just liberty. There's freedom, and then there's freedom. Um, back to what you were saying, BG. Uh, freedom of thought, freedom of expression, freedom of action. No, no, you can't have freedom of action because. Uh, 
and that's where the uh, that's where I agree with the libertarians. Um, you're free to do whatever you want as long as what you do has no impact on anybody else. Non-aggression principle. You're free to do whatever you want as long as you don't aggress upon another. As long as you don't cause harm to another. As long as you don't affect another's property. So yeah, no, freedom is an illusion, uh, but liberty is not. And that that's more when we say freedom. What again? I violate my own rule. Should be saying liberty instead of freedom. Yeah, but use of force violates that that term or that that principle. Force is only ever justified in self-defense. Anything else, and you're trying to impose your will on somebody else. And that's not acceptable. Not in a polite society. Not in a civil society. That's anarchy. But on, on, on that same note, there has to be some agreed upon rules, and you know, if you violate those rules, there has to be some agreed upon punishment for violating those rules. Loss of assets, loss of liberties. Yeah. Because society as a whole generates these rules, and if you can't fit within those rules, then you don't get to participate, you don't get to play. The answer is simple. Getting other people to go along with it, not so much. Because it requires effort. And there's too many people who have for too long not had to put forth effort to be a part of the society. We've fallen too far in one direction. So right now it's just not conceivable. It's just not possible. There's too many people wanting a free ride. And when you have... A surplus of those types of folks, you can't can't conceivably make it work. Always appreciate good conversations.